like so many of you, I think I came from somewhere else. I wasn't born here. I was born in Massachusetts. I've lived in many places. I went to school, four different schools throughout my high school career. And I think in some ways that kind of prepared me for politics. I'm a little bit used to coming into a room when I, where I don't know people and, and talking to folks. And I have learned that I really enjoy getting to know people and getting to know places. Um, I have lived in Arlington, however, since 1977. Um, this is home for me. Uh, my husband and I met in college. Uh, I, when The day after I graduated from college, we got married. A month later, we were in the Central African Republic, and he and I were uh, the first Peace Corps volunteers in Bomberi in the Central African Republic, where we taught English uh, as a foreign language. We came back and settled here, and um, I went to work first for Peace Corps and then for Congressman Lee Hamilton. Then I was thinking about, I had a baby, and I was thinking I would go back to work until they handed me this beautiful child. And I think, like so many women of my generation, the way I really got started was in politics was through the PTA. Obviously, working for Lee Hamilton, I'm a politics major, it's always interested me. I never thought of running myself. Um, and, but way back in 1995, I'd been active in our PTA, and we had some inequities in our school system. So it's always been a good school system, but there were some real major issues. There was severe crowding. We've got crowding again, I know, but we had it back then, and mostly in my part of the county, which was South Arlington. Um, so, I also saw a variety of things of uh, inequities in the quality of education. So I ran on a number of issues. I ran on better equity in the schools. I ran on a new school in South Arlington that we needed to build. And I also called for an outside audit of our capital, thank you, of our capital improvement program. And um, I lost that first uh, election. But the day after I lost, the headlines in the Washington Post were $25 million missing from Arlington Public Schools capital program. That got folks' attention. They asked me to run um, again, which I did, and I um, won my election. And now I'll get back to just a little bit of what I was going to say so we get uh, set. Yeah, we've seen actually a lot of change since then. Uh, since 1996, when I got on the board, uh, we built that new school. That's Carlin Springs Elementary School. We have closed the achievement gap by about 50%. You know, some, some, a lot of times you walk into a school and you see children, if they look different, often children of color, you just figure they don't do as well academically. We're trying to change that in Arlington, and we're making good strides. We have a long ways to go, but we're really doing a good quality of education for every child in the school system. Uh, we have been building our buildings on time and on budget. I will address the Washington Lee thing later on. Um, it's a very reasonably priced building. If you go into them, they're well built. They're not Taj Mahal's. They're built with cinder blocks, but they're done with good architectural style, and they're wonderful facilities for the community. I pushed hard to make sure that Wakefield High School got into the bond and was planned. And I had a lot of opposition to doing that because we, at that point, didn't look like we could afford it. And I said, we've got to be ready. You never know. When the economy tanked, we were ready. And it saved the uh, taxpayers $30 million. And that school is under construction now. You can see it going up. And it, again, will be a wonderful facility. Now, the way we have gotten our schools to be among the best in the country is through good accountability to taxpayers, good planning, strategic planning, focus. And we set our goals, and we work on them, and we stay. Um, we set our priorities. And I, one of the reasons I'm looking forward to being on the county board is that Arlington is a wonderful county. I think a lot of things are working well, but I think we're having a little trouble keeping our priorities straight. Is it all about education, infrastructure, public safety, or is it about artist spheres and um, streetcars and that sort of thing? I think we need to be very clear about our priorities and make them our core services. I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Good. I um, have asked, because Audrey has talked before about this issue of Washington Lee and, and told me actually, which was very helpful, thank you, that the information came from Wikipedia. So um, I asked our staff, and I just actually got the email, which is why I've, I've got my, my machine. I don't usually pull this out. So when you look at costs of buildings, you know, you need to look at one, where they're built and, and what goes into the building and the amenities we've got. Washington Lee is Gold LEED certified. That's Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. Um, it also is providing a wonderful pool. I don't know if you all have been able to use that pool, but it's a really wonderful facility. Um, and so our staff actually did a look at the costs of building and construction and looked regionally and, and basically came out with this, that the low per square, because you look at dollars per square foot, and sort of on the low end, our school's built at $125 per square foot. At the high end is $340 per square foot. Washington Lee was 246 so kind of right in the middle. Um, and if you've got the square feet per student, how many square feet per student that you provide? Again, on the low end is 110 square feet per student. On the high end is 340 square feet per student. Again, Washington Lee is in the middle at 196 square feet 
for students. So again, it's it's really in the middle of what of what you would of what you would expect. Um, and then the cost per student, again, uh, the dollars per student, 48, uh, 20,000 is the low. I mean, construction costs vary quite a bit. This has got to be one of the most expensive places to build in. 60,000 is the high. And uh, Washington Lee was at 48,000. So again, right in the middle. And um, I know we talk a lot about independent voices. And uh, when I, um, I think I mentioned to you when I first ran that I did not win the first time my primary. It was the, the second time I did. And in this last primary, if you look um, on the county board, I am a good Democrat. I've worked with county board members very closely for many, many years. None of them supported me in the primary. None of the sitting county board members. Barbara Cavola did, but none of the sitting primary uh, board members did. If you go back to my re-election on the school board in 2008, and I've done quite a good job, again, none of the sitting county board members supported me. I'm known for being quite independent. I'm a good Democrat, I'm a team worker, but I am independent. And I am looking forward to being independent and representing you all. Well, this is a wonderful community, and it has really been an honor to serve on the school board for the last 15 years. Um, and, and I think the question, as I said earlier, really is all about growth and change. How do we manage growth and change? And I've really been leading growth and change on the school board for the past 15 years. Our schools are among the best in the country. We've got a long ways to go. We're not perfect by a long shot. But it's a very, it's a very admired school system, and it has gone through a lot of change in the last 15 years, and I'm really proud to be a part of that. Um, I also am really looking forward, I hope, to being on the county board and to serving you there. Um, I, you could call the Democratic Party a club if you want. I will tell you again, which I think I said before, none of the sitting members on the county board supported me in the primary. I had more votes than the second and third person combined, which allows me to go into this position with a fair amount of clout, if you will, um, because if the voters support me, which I think they do, I have deep roots in this community, that's how you actually um, affect change. It's a matter of using soft power to get done what we need to get done in this county. I think some hard questions need to be asked um, about projects like the streetcar, um, about the artist fair. I'm not quite sure how we ended up with that building, but I'll, I'll probably find out. Um, and we need to be setting priorities for public safety. Our police have not had a, um, there's not been an increase in police in the last 10 years. Um, and the county has grown quite a bit. Uh, we do, as I think if you've indicated, as I've indicated, we've had some tussles between the school and the county side. Um, and I think I can help bridge that gap because I think actually the closer the schools and the county work together, the better it will be for everybody. School buildings are public buildings. When it comes to community centers and libraries and things, I think the more we can cooperate, the better off we will be. So I again um, ask for your vote on the 27th. I promise to work for you as I have for the last 15 years. You're welcome to look at my record, welcome to go on my website and see any, anything more about who I am. I promise to listen to you and anybody else in the county who will talk to me. And again, you may not always agree with me, but when I make a vote or a decision, you will know why I've made that decision the way I had and what information I used. And I very much hope that if you don't know, you'll ask me. <laughs>